Hey guys, this video is going to be about the latest big update, the November 2015 update for Windows 10. Um, you'll see here if I go to all settings and I go to system and about, you'll see I'm using version um, 15.11.1511 of Windows 10 Pro. Now, if you've recently updated your computer, meaning you went to all settings and you went to update and security and clicked on update, you would have seen that there was a three gigabyte update, three gigs, that is a humongous update. Now, a lot of the changes are done under the hood, which means that you can't really see what they are, but there are some significant changes that you could see. Now, as soon as I updated immediately, it gave me another update. Now, word to the wise is if you haven't updated your computer in a while, it's best to keep it updated. Um, although Windows automatically tries to check for updates, it's best to keep it updated. But the latest, very latest update was three gigabytes in size, and I wondered why the hell is the update so large? Normally they're about two megs to, to 15 to 25 megs, but this one was three gigs. And the reason for that is because there's a bunch of changes. So aesthetically, what they did is they made a change to the start menu uh, where they allow you to actually have more tiles. Now, I'm not really using live tiles. I'm not really a big fan of the live tiles. Um, I'm more the old school kind, but what they did was they granted the ability to have um, additional tiles on this menu. Right now, you'll see I'm having three by threes. Um, see, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then so forth. So they give you the option to personalize the start menu by going to your um, all settings menu and then going, I believe, to personalization and then going to the start menu. And you're able to click on show more tiles. And what that would do, uh, that, that, that wasn't present before the update. What that does is it's, it's going to show you another row here that is available to me now. So I can have four tiles. So if I was a big user of the Windows apps, uh, that's something I could definitely use. So let me just take it off because I don't really use it. And there we go. It became smaller again. But it's nice and convenient if you are using a lot of these apps. You can now fit more real estate by showing more tiles. So that's one thing that I've noticed um, big in this change. Another thing that I saw is that they had brought back uh, colored taskbars. So I'll take a look at my file explorer. You'll see here that this taskbar is now colored. And that holds true with any application. Um, based on the color that I choose, I can now have nice colors and more, uh, I guess, uh, a prettier cosmetic overlay. And let me pop open Edge also. And I saw an update with Edge also. Um, Edge doesn't really take on these cosmetic changes. And neither does the old Internet Explorer. But um, you do have the ability to have these colored uh, tiles. And as you click on Windows, the tiles come about, the color comes about. So here, let me X that out. Um, if you're curious about how to manage the colored uh, taskbar windows, how I have this color, this blue color over all my windows, um, it's simply be, simply done by going to all settings and clicking on personalization, going to colors. And you'll see here that you have the show color on star taskbar action center and title bar and it's checked to on. And that color came from my color scheme, right? So I'm, I'm using, uh, well, you can look at my theme settings and you can see exactly what I'm using in personalization. You can actually do the same thing. You can choose desktop color, uh, a basic drop color, and I'm using a very simple theme here, nothing crazy. Um, all right, let me just not pop up, pop off that. So another big change is to Edge. Uh, a change with Edge is, let's say I go to Google, and let's say I go to Yahoo, and let's say I go to CNN.com. Now, another cool thing that they did was the browser is really fluid. It's really smooth. It's really fast. So I actually enjoy a fast browsing experience. They did a pretty good job at doing that in addition to um, other settings that Edge provides. If you look at my first video on Windows 10, I demonstrated what, what, you, what each one of these icons actually does where you can clip notes and pictures and save websites for offline reading and view um, sites in reader mode. But another cool thing is now when I put my mouse over a tab, it's going to show me a little tiny preview of what's happening on that website. So say I go to uh, GNN.com. Uh, GNN is unreachable. Okay, yeah, GNN radio. Um, you'll see that when I put my mouse over it, it gives me a preview of that page. So that's another really neat thing that they added in here. Um, 
in addition to that, they also made Cortana a little bit smarter. So Cortana is sitting in the back right now and basically is listening to my entire browsing session. Um, she knows what websites I go to. She knows what to recommend to me. And often she'll throw um, some kind of a notification my way, especially when you go shopping. Um, I haven't tested this out thoroughly, but I've heard that if there is a coupon available from Retail Me Not, for example, or any other kind of things, she will actually notify you of those coupons as you browse the site, which is really, really awesome. Um, it's kind of like, like having a companion, uh, which is what Cortana is, essentially. I made a video about Cortana also showing how she works and what it is that she does. A very, very smart um, uh, artificial intelligence system. So I really like the way that... Uh, uh, they had integrated all this stuff. It's really cool. Um, I've already ripped Cortana to shreds in my other video by making her do all kinds of things and answer all kinds of weird questions. Uh, she's just like Siri, except for Windows 10. Uh, another thing that I know that they have done with this is they made activation pretty simple. When we go to uh, Windows settings, to all settings, and we go to update and security and then activation, you can now activate Windows 10 um, after the fact. So if you've downloaded Windows 10 and asks you for a product key, you can now enter uh, a straight product key um, from Windows 7, Windows 8. It'll actually accept those. Uh, from my understanding, most people upgrade their Windows directly um, because they received a little notification that says Windows 10 is now available. So um, you're actually able to punch in keys now, product keys from 7 and 8 products, which is really cool because people won't have a big mess um, registering their product. Uh, also, I've read in uh, patch notes that they have added a Find My Device feature if you have a laptop. Now I'm using a desktop, but if you go to um, uh, to updated security, there's a feature here that's called uh, Find My Device, which is not enabled on my machine. However, Find My Device is enabled on um, laptops and mobile devices. So if you have a laptop running Windows 10, you can set Find My Machine, uh, Find My Device, and uh, it works very similarly to the way that the uh, Find My iPhone works. Um, periodically, it sends little pings to the map of the location. And it shows you um, where your device is or where, where your device was last pinged in case you forgot it somewhere or lost it or anything like that. And another thing which they have added, I'm just jumping thing by thing here, is uh, smarter multitasking. Now, I made a video about virtual desktops before. That's something they didn't really touch on. But what they did do is, say I have two windows open. Say I have uh, Google, I have uh, Chrome open, and I also have File Explorer open. If I was to drag a window to the corner, it will snap it, right? And uh, what I can also uh, do is I can now click on what I would like snapped in addition to that. Um, and there is smart resizing now. Um, I didn't snap this properly. Hold on, let me reopen these. So say I'm working in two applications. Um, what I could do is I could drag one to the corner, pick the application which I want to snap, and I can drag in between. And what it should be doing, which is not doing it on my machine for whatever reason, is sizing appropriately according to moving my windows, right? So if I have two windows open, I wonder if this will work with Word and Excel. Let me pop open Excel. Um, and also let me pop open Word. And we're going to give a shot to that. We're going to try that out real quick. Uh, as they open, um, if you haven't seen the video I made previously about virtual desktops, you guys got to check it out. Uh, in task view, just click on uh, new desktop and another new desktop. And I have three desktops open right now. Um, Excel is opening on my primary desktop and I could switch over to it uh, and I could send it to a different desktops. Now, since, my, since this update, things have been remarkably slow on my computer as um, I literally just finished updating a couple of moments ago, so excuse the uh, the lag. Um, but here, let me now open up an Excel workbook and a Word workspace. And suppose that I want to drag one to the corner and select what I'm going to be working with. I should be able to see the applications change, although it's not giving me that option, but I have seen it doing it before. I was able to move one and the other one would scale. Um, I'm doing it manually right now, obviously, but this is something that I know which they were working on. Um, and that is that was one of the updates, but it's a total bomb in this video because you see it's not currently working. But when you move one, the other should move as well. I'm not sure if that was interrupted by my previous update because I updated my computer twice um, because there were about four additional updates. I have yet to restart my machine since the update. Um, but yeah, that's uh, how it works. 
Uh, here, let me pop open. Let me move these to another desktop. Uh, right click, um, move to desktop two, move to desktop two, and kill desktop three. So I still have Excel and Word running in the background. They're just running on a whole other desktop, a virtual desktop. Uh, and I pop open to those. I can actually shut it down. I'm just demonstrating like the ease of navigation uh, within Windows 10. I really started enjoying it. I think it's a really, really neat operating system. Um, you know, they, they actually took notes from all the other systems. So in a nutshell, this is all the aesthetics um, uh, update that I've created for Windows. Now, if I just move in here and let me clear all these notifications. Windows Defender is driving me insane. Um, in all settings, you can always just play around and, and kind of see what's new and what's not new, like what they have. Um, I guess and, and personalize my PC to give you the option to actually modify everything here. I believe the lock screen now is changeable. You see you have a nice Joker lock screen. Uh, but you can play with the lock screen and now modify it. I believe they added a modification feature to change um, what the lock screen looked like, even though I believe they had done that before as well. Colors, uh, all normal stuff, background, of course there's themes. Um, and for the start menu, well, one thing I really wish they did is they would do is remove um, newly highlighted programs. Another last thing I want to touch on is the way the menus are now displayed. Previously, the menus didn't look like this, but when I right-click my start menu, take a look at how the menu now appears. It appears to have a nice little GUI around it. They made it dark and, and uh, white contrast font to kind of make it look uh, very Metro-ish, which is uh, really cool. So that's it. That, that's pretty much uh, all the latest uh, um, aesthetic features, ones that you'll actually be noticing. Now, all this in 3 gigs, this is not everything they offered you. Um, obviously, there is a lot more improvement to Windows, uh, a lot of which I may not be covering because I'm not even fully aware of them. Um, I've touched on the most prime ones, the things which you'll be using the most. However, uh, there are more features out there. Um, the under the hood features just strictly show you um, well, not show you, there to improve your performance, uh, things that are changed in the code and the way the registry is built and things of that nature. So that's pretty much it. And I recommend this update for everybody. Um, I'm running Windows 10 Pro fully updated on a 8 gig machine and it's running pretty smooth. I got to tell you, I really like it. As I use more programs, the faster it actually works because I'm uh, utilizing more memory um, and uh, freeing up more memory. It's kind of like exercising a muscle. But I'm not having any issues at all with the system. The system is actually really cool. It works really neat. Um, I'm enjoying using it. So I'll end the video there. Um, I hope you guys do update in case you wondered what's new with this update. I hope this video sheds some light into some of the new features. Very minor changes, but again, very big for Microsoft. Um, you know, they build on top of these things. So it's, it's very important. And it's all based on user feedback. This is what people have been asking Microsoft to do. And if you actually use uh, Edge, there's a little icon. Where is that icon? Actually, it's not an Edge. I believe it's an Internet Explorer. It's a little smiley face icon. And you could send a smile and a suggestion to Microsoft and hit send and actually read those. And that's how they came up with all these patch notes and patch updates. Now, can, you can expect a bunch more patches to come out Nothing is uh, perfect in the Microsoft world, but they try. They really do try, at least with this one, uh, with this operating system version. So I'll end the video there. I just wanted to say thank you again for watching. Um, a lot of feedback on my uh, Excel video, the last one that I made. I uh, really appreciate you guys' uh, viewership. Subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, I appreciate all my subscribers. And uh, come again. I try to post as much content as possible. And if you have any requests, post them in the comment section below or send me a message. And that's it. Thank you very much, and you guys have a good night. Till next time.